Hey everybody, welcome to CAF Warbird Tube, the show where we talk about World War II, aviation, history, and so much more. Warbird Tube is produced by the Commemorative Air Force, the world's largest flying museum. Our mission is to educate, inspire, and honor through flight and living history experiences. The CAF began the Warbird Movement more than 65 years ago, and thanks to the support of individuals like you, we continue to grow strong. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and now our host, Steve Buss. Thanks for watching and keep them flying. Well, good evening and welcome to Warbird Tube. This is uh, episode number 151 of uh, Warbird Tube. And we're glad to have you with us uh, tonight. And tonight we are going to talk about sun and fun. Now it is known as the kickoff to the air show season. It's one of the greatest events you can go to uh, and uh, perfect timing, especially for those of us who live up north. But this year, it's even more special because it is their 50th and we're going to talk with Gene Conrad in just a moment and he's going to tell you some of the wonderful things that are coming up at the Lakeland Linder International Airport and also focus in on some of the warbirds that will be there coming up very shortly in just a few weeks. But before we get started, please do us a favor. If you haven't already done so, please take a second to like, share or subscribe and follow us. And if you do subscribe on YouTube, please click that bell icon and you'll get notifications about new episodes of Warbird Tube when they get posted. Now, this uh, Warbird Tube episode is made possible by the Commemorative Air Force. Find out more about CAF, our events, our aircraft, local units, or how you can join the fun. Visit our website, commemorativeairforce.org. Now, tonight, you may have some questions about uh, sun and fun, how to get there, where to stay, all sorts of things about... Uh, everything that's happening during the show. Well, if you have a question and we don't cover it, please type right in the chat box and we'll try to answer those questions for you either during the presentation or before we sign off. So right now, uh, joining me from Lakeland, Florida, Gene Conrad. Gene, glad to have you on the show. And um, we had a, a little, little technical glitch getting, <laughs> getting things to work, but we're glad that you're here. here. So welcome. Ready to go. So uh, Gene, we're, uh, we're looking at uh, the uh, slide here of, of you and uh, you know I've, I've known you for quite a few years uh, your dad was the airport manager here at, at Whitman Whitman Airport at the time now Whitman Regional Airport the home of VIA and the uh, air venture fly-in but you have had one stellar career since uh, starting out at a relatively young age volunteering uh, for uh, air venture yes well hey thanks Steve appreciate the opportunity sure. to be here with everybody tonight and um, you know, not that I'm counting, but we're 41 days out from our 50th flying. So I'll throw, you'll see that theme throughout the uh, throughout the presentation tonight. But um, again, I'm you know just appreciative of the time. But I was born in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and so I only know what I know. Um, my dad ran the airport there when I was a kid. You know, I grew up around Paul Poberesny and Audrey and Tom and Steve Whitman and you know all these names that people have known you know throughout the decades and just very fortunate upbringing. And, uh, you know, that's where I obviously I caught the bug and the love, my love for aviation. And, uh, you know, I've been volunteering up at Air Venture for the last 34, 35 years at uh, Air, Air Show Operations. So I handle all the Air Show performers up there. Um, so have a great time doing that. Every year I get up there. I've always told my employers as I, when I'm going for an interview or whatnot, I'm taking this week off. If you can't accept it, then I'm not accepting this job or just, just knock me out. I'm out. So. But it just, I, I, I love, you know, obviously Air Venture. But, um, you know, with my career, I've, I've run airports myself for over 21 years now. Prior to coming to Sun and Fun, um, you know, I ran Lakeland Linder International Airport here for 12 years. And the whole reason I moved to Lakeland, Florida, um, you know, to run the airport here is because Sun and Fun was here. I came in 2003 with my father. At the time, he was running Dayton International Airport. We were getting ready for the centennial of flight there in Dayton, Ohio. We came to, we came here to see the Bolario that was here, and we brought that to uh, brought that to Dayton, um, you know. But just very unique upbringing. I got to meet a lot of aviation legends, um, and you know. So again, but I'm here because Sun Fun was here, and so when my predecessor John Leanhouse decided to retire, um, I jumped all over it to come over here and run this great organization. So here we are, almost two years into it now. Yeah, congratulations. Um, and under your tenure as the director of the airport, you saw quite a bit of expansion uh, on the other side of the airport from where Sun and Fun is. Uh, it is really a, it's a, a hopping place compared to what it was, you know, maybe 20, 25 years ago. It, 
Yeah, and this last year, so 2023 obviously just ended, and I know the airport did 157,000 aircraft operations in 2023, and I think they're the number 98th busiest airport in the country as far as aircraft operations. Um, so there's just there's a lot of flight school activity, a lot of itinerant aircraft. Obviously, Sun and Fun's about 8,000 of that, um, but there's just a lot of activity being here in Central Florida, great airspace here. So a lot of people doing lots of touch and goes and 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 whatnot. So pretty pretty busy airport. Excellent. Well, let's uh, take a little trip back in time and and talk a bit about the history of the event. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to lay it out for folks too, because again, it's our 50th, right? And so you know, our first flying was back in 1975. But our organization started in 1974, December of 1974. So I've had a lot of questions. Well, how can it be your 50th, right? Because when, you, like, when you're born, you're not zero until you've gone around the sun once, or you're not one until you've gone around the sun once, right? But when you have your first annual, that's number one, right? So that was in 1975. But we will celebrate our anniversary, our 50th anniversary in December of this year. But again, it's the 50th flying. Um, they actually started this picture um, here is up on the north side of the airport. Sun and Fun started on the north side. Um, in 1977, we moved to the location uh, where we operate today. Uh, one of our, our first exhibit building was built back in 1980. Um, we're going to get into kind of our educational programming, what we do now, but our first teacher workshop was back in 1988. Uh, we donated $1,000 to Kathleen High School, which we'll talk about our Central Florida Aerospace Academy because they're tied together um, back in 1989. You can see the Florida Air Museum, um, which is here connected to my office right below me. Um, and, you know, our CFAA, the Lakeland Aero Club and Skylab Innovation Center, we'll talk about all those things. But kind of give you a history of kind of these key key pieces of our, you know, our first 50 years. Go to the next slide. Yep. Yeah, so with Sun Fun and Ace, so, you know, a lot of folks, so everybody knows us for Sun and Fun. They know us for the fly-in. Um, but our parent company now is the Aerospace Center for Excellence. So we have two 501c3 not-for-profits. And so, you know, back in back in 2014, when they made the switch, we had Sun and Fun Flying, Inc. as one of the 501c3s, and then Florida Air Museum, Inc. And then the board um, made a great decision and kind of they took the Florida Air Museum, Inc. and turned that into the Aerospace Center for Excellence. And now Sun and Fun is a subsidiary of the Aerospace Center for Excellence. So when people are here or you hear us talk about that, and when I talk about, you know, all of our programming here later, um, that's what ACE is. So kind of like EAA, the Experimental Aircraft Association, you have Air Venture, we have the Aerospace Center for Excellence, and Sun and Fun is, is our fly-in. So kind of wanted to, you know, because I know there's, you know, we have sometimes I like to tell my folks we have brand schizophrenia, and, you know, so I just want to be able to lay that out a little bit so everybody can appreciate, you know, what we do and, you know, and why the fly-in is so important because, you know, our net proceeds go back into into our um, our educational programming. Excellent. Yes, the Aerospace uh, Center for Excellence. I mean, that's uh, you've got a great mission to engage, educate, and accelerate the next generation of aerospace professionals. That is it, and that you know that's what we do the other fifty-one weeks out of the year. You know, so we spend a lot of time planning for the fly-in because it's a lot, right? And um, you know, but the the rest of the year we have fourteen educators or fourteen people on our on our ACE team that just do education. Um, we have ed three educators on staff, um, you know, so we have a robust team to, you know, really focus on our on our youth here in our in our region. Great. And uh, tell us a little bit about exactly what ACE is. Yeah, so ACE is, you know, our 25 acre campus here that's dedicated to STEM learning and aerospace education. Um, we'll get into each one of these elements, uh, whether it's the Central Florida Aerospace Academy, Lakeland Aero Club. Travis Career College, which is our AMP program here on our campus. Again, the Florida Air Museum, the Skylab Innovation Center, and Elevate, which is our aerospace and logistics actual incubator, right? So brand new companies or startup companies, um, we have a space for them with several offices that we created back, actually we opened it back in 2022. So, um, you know, lots of, lots of activities here. Great, well, let's start with the uh, Central Florida Aerospace Academy. Yeah, so this, you know, we are very fortunate. So the Central Florida Aerospace Academy started here at Lake Melinda International Airport on the Sun and Fun campus back in 2008. Um, and then we were very fortunate. We had a benefactor come in by the name of Mr. James Ray, who's a B-17 pilot in World War II. 
um, and he donated seven and a half million dollars to Summon Fund to build what you see there below um, in that slide is our, our three-story, 58,000 square foot high school that today has 385 students in it. Um, and the unique partnership that we have with the school is we own the building and the Polk County Public Schools leases that building from us. All of those monies go into our Central Florida Aerospace Academy Foundation where we provide 100% scholarships to any kid that goes to that school, they have to apply obviously, or lives in the county and we pay for the private pilot certificate. And so right now we have 175 um, certificated pilots through that program. And then we also, um, at the end of the school year to the graduating seniors, um, we, we, um, we uh, award about $100,000 in college scholarships to our graduating seniors as well. So it is an awesome program, and we're very fortunate to have it here. And so at the Central Florida Aerospace Academy, we have six tracks. So we have aerospace engineering, aerospace technologies, which is the pilot track specifically, um, avionics technician, UAS drones, part 107, um, AMP mechanic through Travis Greer College, and then our, uh, this just started back in uh, 2023, the sixth track, which is business management. So if you want to run, you know, whether it's an FBO or you want to run an AMP shop, you want to be an airport manager, that is the track for, for those students. Wow. It is good stuff. So again, the scholarship program, 175 private pilots as of, I think, yesterday. And we award about two to four um, scholarships a month. So at any time, we have about 30 to 40, um, you know, young folks in the program. Um, and we have we have a dedicated individual that tracks all of our kids that manages the scholarship program because we just don't want to give them money, you know, and then they, they're they not following through. They're not doing what they need to do. They're not getting to ground school. You know, there's, you know, I was young once. We all were. There's sometimes there are excuses, right? But we like to stay on them and help them. You know, it's not we just don't want to give them the money and just run away from them. We want them to be, you know, obviously part of our family. And we're very close to all these folks because they're right across the street, actually. Um, you know, but it, again, it's been a very, very successful and great program for us. So with the Central Florida Aerospace Academy in Lakeland, um, because of our great partnership with Polk County, Polk County Public Schools, we now have Central Florida Aerospace Academy Winter Haven at Gilbert Field. So back in, right after Sun and Fun last year in April, we did the um, the ribbon cutting for the portables that the school system put in place for Central Florida, Florida Aerospace Academy at Winter Haven at Gilbert Field. Um, there's 250 kids in that school right now, and we are working to build a brick and mortar school on the airport there as well. It would be our second high school there on Gilbert, on, uh, on Winter Haven's airport. So, and we're, we're pretty excited. Uh, we're, we're working with some folks to, um, you know, give us another seven and a half million dollars to, to get that um, facility constructed. And then the school board through impact fees is going to put in about this other seven and a half million dollars. So basically the cost has doubled since we built it back in uh, uh, 2011. So. so my light just went out. You want to give me one second? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be one of those nights. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> we can still see it. There you go. And so, you know, and then once the uh, Central Florida Aerospace Academy was complete and built um, back in 2013, our local community college, Polk State College, um, they started an AS and BS degree um, in aerospace sciences um, here on Lincoln Linder International Airport as well. So now when these kids graduate, you know, obviously Embry Riddle, FIT, great schools, you know, but they're private schools, very, very expensive. Um, but Polk State College, you know, it's very reasonable for them to attend and also get in work through and get all of the ratings all the way through ATP, um, you know, and be ready to go, you know, to the workforce. And we've been very, very fortunate both through the AS and our BS programs. We've, we've placed 100% of our graduates. Now, if they graduated, we're placing them. If they didn't graduate, they didn't get placed yet. So, yeah. but of our graduates, 100% have been placed. Um, so it's pretty, pretty great track record. Um, Lakeland Aero Club. So uh, James Ray, the benefactor for our Central Florida Aerospace Academy, he donated another million dollars and built that 10,000 square foot hangar that you see there, right here on Lakeland Linder International Airport, right next to. So if you've been here, it's a sun and fun, um, right next to the grass strip where we affectionately call it Paradise City. Um, and when I was the airport director, we actually extended it. If you recall, way back in the day, there used to be um, just ditches, big, wide open ditches on both ends. So we culverted in those ditches. Um, and extended it 
uh, for year-round use of the high school for our high school kids over there. So 65 members and their 10,000 square foot hangar. Uh, they have three Piper Cubs, a couple other craft projects that they're working on in there. Um, but they've flown up to Air Venture several times um, by themselves, which is in their Piper Cubs, which it takes, I want to say it's three or four days for them, um, but they make the trek. And we have chase cars and we follow them and all that, but they do a phenomenal job. And we're super proud of all of them, you know, with, with everything that they've been, been able to accomplish. And because of Lakeland Aero Club here at Lakeland, we now have Aspiring Aviators Aero Club over in Winter Haven. So they have about 30 students in their program on um, the Aerospace Center for Excellence. We donate money to them each of the last two years um, to get that program up and going because obviously we want, this is a large county. So Polk County in Florida is the fourth largest county about the size of Rhode Island. Um, so there's lots of people here. And so there were lots of questions with the high school in Lakeland and one in Winter Haven. You know, are you going to, are you going to, you know, pull some kids out of one and, you know, kind of mess up the numbers a little bit. That's not the case because in Lakeland, we're on the far west side um, of the county. We have about 250,000 people in, in the Lakeland suburbs and in our metropolitan area. And then Winter Haven, the other side, Bartow, um, Auburndale, the other side of the county, is another 500,000 people over there. So there's plenty of kids to go around. So. Also, uh, Travis Technical College, so again with Polk County Public Schools, um, their A&P program is here on our campus as well, um, over in what we call our Tom Davis Center. So they have the airframe and their power plant. Um, you know, classes are over there, and uh, over 250 students have participated in the last five years, and 200 have received their uh, A&P certificate. So it's been a great program for us as well. So it's all one-stop shopping here, you know, um, you know, for our young folks and then also our young adults as well. Yeah. And, and so with with all the youth activity that's happening on the airport, I mean, they pretty much have, uh, you know, free free reign and it's not not too busy 51 weeks out of the year. But how do they integrate into all the activities that are happening during the flight? Well, that's a great question. So during because of our great partnership with Polk County Public Schools, our kids at the high school in Travis, they're off the entire week. So they get to volunteer with us, which is great because they get to get out, they get to get their hands dirty, they get to go meet people, you know, they get to go experience, you know, the whole event during the week. So it's it's really great. So we get to use their buildings, like all of our forums um, are in the Central Florida Aerospace Academy, which are great because they have all the AV, it's air conditioning and all that. So it's great, um, you know, so, it, you know, they get to get out there and get their hands dirty and volunteer. And, you know, this year, our freshmen that are over there, because we always need help in parking. And a lot of people don't want to deal with vehicle parking. Um, so we're putting all of our freshmen in, in the uh, vehicle parking. They've got to do at least three days during the week this year. So to help us out. So they're, nice. they're all good kids. So you got to pay your dues. Yep. So. In a Florida Air Museum, obviously been here for quite a long time. You know, we are the official aviation museum for the state of Florida. Um, and, and what's happened, you know, over the last couple of years with the Florida Air Museum is we have great assets in there. Um, but we've really been focusing on using that asset. Um, you can see there our little uh, ad for story time. So we're bringing in kids from two to five right now. So we have anywhere from um, 80 to 90 people here on Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock um, with these two to five year olds. And we have big screens and we read them books. Um, we're also attached to the museum. We're working to build the destina destination aviation playground. So when those kids are here, they get through story time, they can go out and play in our playground and go to our, or go to our pavilion and eat lunch. So, you know, we want to get them, our, our, our mantra is kind of cradle to cockpit. So we want to get these kids as young as possible. So, and then um, back in actually during COVID, um, kudos to the team well before my time and John Leanhout um, and all the benefactors, um, but we raised over $5 million to build. So if you look at this picture on the left, um, the building behind, you can see the blue trim on the top. You can see kind of the hangar building in the back. That's the Florida Air Museum. And everything out front um, is our Skylab Innovation Center. So to the left, um, the ICOF um, conference room, there was an elevator over there. And that where the blue is and the larger windows is open air. Um, and uh, so Skylab, we, we filled in that space, added about 8,000 square feet. And now we have four purpose-built labs, um, STEM-based labs in Skylab. You've, move over to the next slide um you know stem-based labs and this year with, again with our partnership with polk county public schools and our local airports here in polk county so lakeland bartow winter haven uh, lake wales um they all put seventy-five thousand dollars together 
Um, so we are actually transporting and busing over 4,000 fifth graders from around the county to to Sun of Fun, right here to our building at ACE, the Aerospace Center for Excellence, to go through our field trip program for our fifth graders. Because if you know, if you're if any educators out there, fifth grade, um, their minds about that time is kind of that's kind of their time of you know they're starting to figure it out, and we can you know kind of guide them in a direction. Um, so to get these fifth graders is a big win for us this year. Over again, four thousand that will be coming through and we're busing them out here. They're out here for about three hours. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have about 60 kids every single day through the rest of the school year. So um, we have science on the sphere. You can see there this is our Siemens engineering lab. So they're doing 3D printing robots. Um, our Redbird flight simulation lab, Redbird, great partners with us. We love them. And then our, our UAS drone lab as well. So lot, lots of cool stuff there for them. And then, you know, we briefly talked about Elevate. So, you know, when you think about to, you know, our, our mission is to engage, educate, and accelerate the next generation of aerospace professionals and our, our accelerate piece, right? So our incubator, um, you can see, again, this was back in 2022, um, but it's mixed-use office space. This, this office space actually was our old admin offices. So if you've been here to the event at Hangar A, um, our exhibit building, um, you know, but we have think tank labs in there, you know, best in class membership opportunities, great partnerships with Polk County Public Schools and others here in the community to make sure, you know, our, our young folks or our up and coming businesses have the resources that they need, um, you know, to get established. And we've had several companies already through the program that have moved out in the lease space here at Lakeland or other facilities here in Polk County. So it's pretty cool. Excellent. Yep. And just, you know, to finish up here with ACE, um, you know, and I think it was the summer of 2022, we did about three summer camps. This last year, we did 13. We'll have 13 summer camps again this year. We had kids, lots of kids here, obviously, from Florida and Central Florida. But we actually had kids from California, um, Michigan. Uh, they came here with their families. They'd go, you know, stay. The, the families and the other kids would go stay at the mouse or whatever. And the other kids would come here and stay with us for a week and, and be here and, uh, you know, go through our summer camp. So those were very, very successful for us this year uh, our after school program so some kids don't want to be pilots or they're not going over to the aero club but we have our after school program to get kids you know hands-on working with wood working with metals riveting um you know all that good stuff to you know help them with those skills and if you've seen any of my videos if you watch any of the stuff on our social media stuff um you know again john leanhouse lights um, you know, uh, I think it was 2022, we raised $150,000. So we have our media lab there as well. So we're able, we have a production studio in Skylab as well. So it's like, we are very advanced at this point. So we're very fortunate because of, again, all the participation by everybody that's on this call that comes to Sun and Fun and also, you know, our 2,900 volunteers that help us each year to put on this great event. So, yeah. And, and, you know, and we've, we've spent time, you know, this, the first part of this uh, webinar just talking about all the things that are going on the other 51 weeks out of the year. But it, as you just mentioned, a lot of the of the funding that goes into that is generated through this this one week event. And uh, again, you know, it's it's uh, it's a fantastic way to start out the air show season. But also knowing that, you know, if you if you come to Sun and Fun your you know the dollars that you're spending are helping you know regenerate into the aviation community and I think it's just a, a really great great situation absolutely yep so here we are yeah our 50th. 50 years so you know i just want to point out some elements real quick if you can see the poster there on the right if you see there's kind of a silhouette of two gentlemen that's billy henderson and paul poberesny so paul was a big a big proponent, obviously, of Sun and Fun. You know, it was the Sun and Fun EA Flying, so our 50th logo is kind of a throwback to that, right? Um, you know, from from our beginning. And you know, we love EAA. We're very fortunate for that partnership. You know, throughout the years. You know, but we this this poster is our retro throwback to 1975, the year I was born. Um, <laughs> you know, so 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 here we are. And you know that the uh, the uh, tripacer that's there. I think it's. A, I'm sure it's a tripacer, but that's Miss Adair. So Billy's wife was Adair Henderson, um, and that's their airplane as well. So that's why we have our tripacer on the on the poster there. So, so again, we're 41 days. Here we go. So <laughs> people are asking me like, "How how you doing?" I'm like, I "I'll be I'll be good." You know, when we're under 40 days, I'll be freaking out, and that will be Friday. So I'm glad we're doing this here on Wednesday. So there you go. 
Yeah, but again, you know, so our 50th, this is a, this is all about celebrating our organization. You know, we're going to celebrate our volunteers and our pioneers and all the people that have impacted our organization, you know, and help us get to where we are today. Again, as a not-for-profit, 50 years. Um, we did not have our, our first time, full-time paid employee here at Center Fund until they were 10 years into the event. So, I mean, it is truly a volunteer organization. We are so fortunate for all these 2,900 folks that can help us come to put on this great event. Um, this year, we're inviting back our Echo of Champions, so aircraft, previous aircraft award winners, whether they're um, grand champion or reserve grand champion aircraft award winners. So we'll have special parking for these folks when they come in. Uh, we'll talk about our warbirds, but we're going to have big warbird presence this year, especially because of our great friends at the Commemorative Air Force. We'll talk a little bit about, here short, about that here shortly. Um, one thing is um, on Tuesday at 10.30 here in our pavilion, uh, Tuesday at 10.30 a.m., our Son of Fun Innovation Preview. Um, so what that is, it's an opportunity. It's about a two-hour program in our pavilion, and we're going to have about 30 exhibitors and vendors that are here. Um, and they're going to be, there's going to be new aircraft announcements, a new engines announcements, new avionics, different various things. Um, so it is a quite the program. So if you want to get the, you know, up to date, latest and greatest, um, 1030 uh, AM Tuesday, April 9th, right here in our pavilion attached to the Skylab Innovation Center, Florida Air Museum is a great program. We did it last year, got great feedback about it, and we're doing it again bigger and better this year. So it'll be great for us. Uh, the concert this year. So we have, I know a lot of people have seen Trace Atkins and then with special guest Sarah Evans. So long story short, uh, Trace unfortunately broke his leg in the, uh, probably around the holidays in December, has had some complications, has to have another surgery in March. So he had to cancel all his shows through June. So that was, that was a little rough for us, but we got Dylan Scott. So our concert will be on the Warbird ramp um, Tuesday evening, starts at six o'clock. So after the uh, daily air show, um, but that should be a great event for us along with Sarah Evans. Um, Anybody that flew in on the east side of the airport, we made a lot of changes where we park aircraft last year. Um, we have what's called the island. So hopefully some of you all got out there. Um, but the island was our opportunity to create an area for camaraderie, services. Um, we have frescoes. So we have a 120 by 60 foot tent. Um, and so we serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner out there. The pilot welcome center is there. Um, we have our, our island store. Uh, there's a tram depot there. Um, so there's also our shower houses, Uber and Lyft drop off. So it's right in the center of where all the aircraft are parking. So it's just, you know, our, our, our way of making sure that all of our guests have an opportunity to make sure they have their amenities and to do the things they need to do. Um, so the island was a huge hit. So when you see that or hear about it, that's what that is. Um, right now, we are at record numbers for exhibitor participation this year. And so our record was back in 2010, and we've, we've blown that out of the water this year. So a lot of excitement. Um, we're basically out of space at this point. I think we have three spots left um, in Hangar D. That's it. And I'm sure they're going to be gone here shortly. Um, so we're, we're, we're doing great on that. On that front, uh, Women Aces. So like Women Venture up at Oshkosh, we have Women Aces. It's our new program this year, which will be Wednesday, April 10th. Uh, so we start off with a breakfast in the morning at 730. Um, we're going to have a speaker a keynote speakers, several speakers, and a panel as well um, for our Women Aces program, and also a special guest who I can't announce yet, um, but she will be here. You'll probably see it next week, um, but it'll be cool. Um, but a special guest that will be joining us as well. And uh, last but not least here, our, our partners with Shelter FBO um, here on Lakeland. They have several FBOs here in Florida, up on, also up into Georgia. Um, they are doing a promotion this year. So even for their FBOs, as you're flowing down and coming down to, you know, Central Florida, so whether it is um, Panama City, Ocala, Jacksonville, Daytona Beach, um, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Um, also, if you're coming from the west side of the country, um, I think it's Broomfield, Colorado, and Denton, Texas, that you can stop there. There will be a $1 discount on Avgas. Um, and also, all of those airports, including here in Lakeland, um, they give us back 10 cents per gallon that's pumped here, including military, by the way. So that's a lot. We have a lot of military here this year as well with the Thunderbirds. Um, you know, but that is a great, great partnership for us. So if, you know, those, it's on our, on our, um, on our webpage as well. Um, so if you're coming, you know, and you're coming down and you need to stop, you know, we encourage you to stop at those airports because 10 cents of every gallon is coming back to the Aerospace Center for Excellence. So great promotion. But last year we generated just from Lakeland about 18,000. 
um, that they wrote us a check for last year. So very good. And now here we go. First of all, I just want to say, you know, and I don't know who's listening, but I just want to say to all the commemorative Air Force teams, the various wings, to my friends, to my friends that I'm going to show right here right now. So hopefully they're excited. My Tampa Bay wing that's located here at Lake Linder International Airport. Um, you know, we are super excited for the presence that you all are going to have this year. So obviously with the Air Power History Tour, um, all these aircraft you're looking at right now on the screen, they're all going to be giving rides. I know Fifi and Diamond Lil will go twice a day, every day. Um, Gunfighter and the others will have different, you know, they'll be just, they'll have windows and they're going to they're gonna come and go as, you know, rides are booked. Um, but we are just so thankful and appreciate the support that we're receiving this year. It is going to be a huge year for us. Um, you know, my son has ridden in Fifi a couple of years ago at AirVenture. And I wanted to mention this. So when I was a kid up at, you know, growing up at EAA and AirVenture, um, Diamond Lil, I remember looking at it because when they used to park in the, out, out there in the Warbird, you know, Warbird area, did, was Diamond Lil, I don't know what the color was, so no one get offended, but it wasn't the kind of pink. <laughs> it was. Was, yeah, so that, I remember desert, that as a kid. So I remember, so these airplanes are very, very important to me. You know, I grew up around them. And again, we're very fortunate. So we, we thank everybody, you know, for, for the participation this year. And we have more um, on the next slide as well. Yeah, but before we before we jump off, I also want to mention that the uh, T-34 from the Florida wing is also coming. Uh, I don't oh. believe they're surprised, but they're, they're bringing the airplane. Um, and they're looking forward to it. And you mentioned the... Uh, the uh, wing in Tampa Bay and uh, uh, Bart uh, reminds everyone to stop by their booth uh, NE-023. All right. So go, go see Bart and company. <laughs> They're in the exhibit building as go. well. So even more CAF participation. Absolutely. You know, and uh, Tora 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 is performing this year. So I don't think they had been here. So when I was at an ICAST, the International Council of Air Shows um, conference back in December, I don't think they've been here since 2016. You know, and they obviously they always put on a great show. So the team is coming back. Um, also, the uh, Tora Bomb Squad. So they're doing all of our pyro as well. So not only just for Tora Tora Tora, but also our fireworks shows on Wednesday and Saturday as well. So we're very grateful for that. Um, the Red Tail Mustang is coming and the Rise Above exhibit. And I don't have the names yet, but I'm being told um, that we have folks working right now to bring two of the original Tuskegee Airmen here. I think they're nine, one is 98 years old and I don't know the age of the other. I don't have their names yet, but we are excited to get that. Oh my gosh, that'll be unbelievable. Um, you know, to have the Rise Above exhibit here along with the Red Tail P-51 is going to be awesome. So we're very, again, very, very fortunate. Uh, our Victory Arsenal Theater out on the Warbird ramp. Um, GAF, each day, 10 a.m., you kind of have the rundown there. There may be some shifts or whatnot, um, but you can see who's going to be there. I will pull the aircraft right up to the bleacher area, and we'll have people there to talk about those aircraft. You can ask questions. Um, so it's going to be, you can see uh, for um, women, for Women Aces Day, um, you'll have the T-6 Nella there. Um, so that'll be great. Again, Tor Tor Tora, Gunfighter, uh, Tuskegee Story um, with the PT-19 as well. So good stuff. Good lineup. Yes. And then some air show highlights. So, you know, uh, I, I will tell you, so, you know, I sent some slides to Steve earlier, so I kind of tweaked some different stuff and wanted to make sure we get, there's, there's a massive lineup this year. Um, I didn't include a lot of the civilian performers because, um, you know, obviously Rob Holland will be here, Mike Gooley and Patty Wagstaff, Jim Pites, um, you know, a lot of our great performers that you see around. We love them. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. You know, but this is Warbird specific and focused today. So if they're watching, I'm sorry. I love you guys. Um, <laughs> You know, but again, the Thunderbirds will be here with us, um, the uh, Ghost Squadron. So you can see there Jared Isaacman and his team, his MiG-29, his um, three Alpha Jets, and his four L-39s. So they'll be, be doing a full aerobatic demonstration. So they're actually coming, and they'll arrive here about March 8th here at Lake Linder to practice over the field um, leading up to Sun and Fun. So they've been out in Montana, I believe it is, practicing, getting ready um, with the routine, but the full aerobatic um, routine um, this year starting at Sun and Fun. So that'll be exciting. Again, our uh, our CAF assets, they will be flying during the show. So not only will they be doing the ride hops, we have certain days that they'll be performing as well. I'm going to have their own dedicated times. Again, Tora, Tora, Tora. Um, the uh, MacArthur Baton, the Super Connie, is coming. Uh, and so with uh, 
Legends, uh, Air Legends Foundation, Rod Lewis and his team, the Connie is coming. So we're, we announced that several weeks ago. So that'll be a great airplane. I know a lot of people saw it at Air Venture, but we're super excited to get it here at, um, at Sun of Fun here in Lakeland. So that's going to be a great ad for us. And there's, there's other cool airplanes that I'm not allowed to talk about yet because we haven't announced it. So in the next several weeks, we'll be, we'll be doing that. Um, so there's more to come. Uh, but, you know, we'll have our F-35A demo team, Heritage Flight, Super Demo, or F-18 Super Hornet with the Legacy Flight. Lee Lauderback, obviously, in his P-51, he's been coming here for decades. Um, and right over there in Kissimmee, we love our friends at Stallion 51. Uh, Class of 45 with Jim Tobo and Scott Scooter Yoke, um, they'll be here. Uh, Jack Aces, which is um, Louie and Ariel um, with uh, Stallion 51. They'll be for performing in their two P-51s. Uh, uh, Larry Kelly, Panchito. The Titan Aerobatic Team. So if you're not aware, our, our friends at Aeroshell are now Titan Aerobatic Team and they're T6s. So if you see them, they have brand new paint jobs. I've seen some of it on social media. Airplanes look, the airplanes look awesome. Um, and again, you know, our Torah Bomb Squad will be with us as well. We're super, super happy to have them join us here this year. So for the Titan Aerobatic Team, is this their, like their coming out party? You know, that's a great question. I don't know. I think they may be still, there may be one or two. They're still getting painted or finishing up. I will look at that. We may okay. be their first show. I don't want to say, I'm, I'm, I can't say that for sure. But we, we're definitely one of their first one or two shows, without a doubt. So, All right. And they're always a great favorite, especially with our night air shows. Um, you know, just some logistical things, too. Um, you know, the field opens each morning. You know, for people that are looking to get in, the, the NOTAM goes into effect at, at 0700 here local. Um, and our arrivals, we close two arrivals at uh, 1900 local each day. Um, you know, so it's a compressed window. So if you're flying in, the Warbird approach is the same as it has been in years past. Um, but, you know, to read the NOTAM, know the NOTAM, it's very, very important. Just like Air Venture, same thing here. Um, you know, but we, we close the airport here at 1900 um, because we start activities. Our Wednesday and Saturday night air show start at 1900 local, go to about 915. 930. Um, our daily air shows each day, Tuesday through Sunday, run from, uh, you know, 1300 to 1700, 1 to 5, local, 1 to 5 p.m. Each day, um, we have a campground area that we have to clear out. So if you are staying in the RVs and you see this yellow line for the jet teams, you have to get out of there. Um, so just want to make people aware of that. And then our Sunset Aerial Circus down at Paradise City. So we affectionately called it, named it that last year. So our Stole Invitational is down there. Um, you know, Yunkers will be down there with their light sport aircraft. We have some EV tall, some ele our electric vertical and takeoff landing aircraft will be performing. Um, 3D RC, some of our Jace Ducia and his friends um, with their RC aircraft uh, with lights and smoke and all that good stuff. And Arrhythmia, our paramotor friends as well down there at Paradise City on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So every night, all day, every night, you know, during your stay here with us, there are activities and lots of flying this year. So. And last but not least, uh, I believe this is my last slide, and we can get to questions. Um, but this is what you're seeing here. This is our layout for our future in-flight plaza. So um, what this is, just off the southern portion of that the, uh, the diagram there, that is our main registration, our main entrance into the event. So this area, which we affectionately called Southeast Exhibits in the past, is now our future in-flight plaza. Um, so when you walk in our front door, it's going to be a hub of activity. Our junior aces tent, so for all of our youth activities, and a 100 by 60 foot tent um, will be out there. Um, our career fair, which was three days, now was five days last year, now six days, completely full. I think there's about 35, um, you know, companies that are in there, including Southwest, Avello, the new airline is going to start here, um, Piedmont Airlines, various other companies. So a very, very successful career fair. Um, our innovation showcase, so our G-Wiz. Jetson type stuff with our EV tolls and our drones and, and whatnot will be in our innovation showcase tent this year. Um, we have our flight sim experience. Uh, so we have 12 companies with different flight sim, um, you know, uh, opportunities to get in moving sims and different things and whatever. Um, so it's, it, we're pretty excited to have that. So that would be that would be fun for folks, especially for our young folks. Um, our colleges, universities, flight schools. And uh, last but not least, our International Oasis, which international tent in years past because our international friends were expecting them back in big numbers this year. And then our Family Oasis, so a, a tent that's available for our young families or anybody um, that, you know, wants to get out of the, uh, you know, the, the sun and take a break, air-conditioned tent and 
um, you know, just get out of the sun and relax and get ready for the rest of the day for our, for our young families. So Thank you. that should be very exciting. All right. I'll let you take a breath now. <laughs> All right. You've covered, you've covered a lot of ground and, and a lot of airspace in the, in the last, last few minutes. Um, so for you, what is the one or two or three, maybe three things that you're looking forward to the most? I mean, there's, there's so much going on, but there, there must be a, a couple of key things that you're looking forward to. I'm looking forward to getting to day one because we have been, I mean, we've been planning this event because of our 50th, you know, last year was the 49th. So a lot of the changes and things we did on the airfield, the moving aircraft areas around and whatnot, producing the island and all that was anticipation for this year. So we've been, I've been thinking about this a long, long time. You know, when I was the airport director, I had an opportunity to watch this event in 2022 before, you know, John Leanhouse uh, retired. You know, I got to, in 2022, just sit back, even though I was working here, and it wasn't really responsible for anything, which was great, but I could watch, and I could drive around it and pay attention to what was going on. So for, last year, 49th, put all these changes in place in anticipation for our 50th. So I'm just looking to open the doors and get this thing kicked off and, uh, you know, and have a great time. So we, we've, I've got a great team, lots of hard work by a lot of folks, and again, our volunteers can't thank them enough. Right. And you mentioned you know, almost 3,000 volunteers help, help make this this happen, not just during the week, but there are people who are there, there are people there already uh, helping get things, getting the grounds yep. ready, and buildings swept out, whatever needs to be done. Um, how many, and it might be hard with, with all the different uh, moving parts, but about how many people are employed uh, for, you know, in, in for the, the flying itself and then for the, the rest, the uh, education areas and the museum? Well, we have. So I have 40, I have 40 people on my team and, yeah. and the rest of it is, you know, we have some part-time staff and for various areas, you know, that we hire, um, you know, for the event or whatnot, but the majority is our volunteers. I mean, it's, it's, um, they do such a phenomenal job. And again, we're so fortunate to have all of them. Um, but we have a, I have a small team, so we, we don't have a lot of folks here. Um, we have grown since I've been here. I think there was probably close to 30 when I got here. Now we have 40. Again, a lot of that's on the educational side of the house, but, small team. So we rely on our volunteers heavily, you know, to help us get all this stuff done. Good. Uh, and we're going to dig deep on this one. A uh, little trivia. Do you know of any volunteers who have been a part of each and every one of the shows? Yes, absolutely. Um, oh, good. So Bonnie, Bonnie Perkins, who was um, our exhibitor, exhibit, exhibitor manager up until last year, um, she started here. She was here on at the first flying, um, and then she became employee. And you know, and she's here. We have lots of pioneers and people. Bill and Susie Eikhoff, um, they have been here since day one. Um, we have Ann McKee, Bill McKee. I mean, they've been here since day one. We have a lot of pioneers that are still, you know, part of our team. And, and they were actually looking through photos uh, in our conference room the other day. I'd like to go in there and say hi to them and you know, let them, you know, pick my brain, what's going on? And cause they get, they're pretty out, they're all pretty excited about this event, but you know, it, it, there's, there's happiness for them too, but it's sad too, because you know, it's 50 years and they've been here a long, long time. And, you know, there's, you know, I look at myself now, I mean, I've, I've aged quite a bit, you know, but they, you know, they, they just, they're, they're taken back by, you know, what has happened and what they have helped create. I mean, if you think about what started on the North side of the airport, coming here to the South side, having to clean up all of the debris and, um, you know, this was an old, you know, military base back in the day, air base. And, you know, so there's a lot of things they had to clean up, things that they found buried, uh, maybe some mun munitions, um, various things, but they had to do all the clearing down here, you know, to open up this, this south, southwest side of the airport, you know, for their first event here in 1977. And, you know, there's, I, we can't thank them enough for, you know, what they did to get this, you know, the flying started and to where we are today. And they continue to support us. And what year was the snow? It was 1975. So I think it was the first one. Maybe 1977. I, I, I probably, someone's probably listening to me like, hey, it was this year. Um, but it, I think it was 1975, the first year, and because it was in January. Yeah. And uh, they, there was accumulated snow. Um, and that's probably the last time, I believe, because I asked um, um, actually Amanda Holly, who works for News Channel 8 in Tampa. She helps us with a lot of things here. Um, and I think that was the, the last measurable snow here in Central Florida was that January in 1975. So there you go. You can hang your head on that. And then the uh, the founders like like Billy Henderson were smart enough to move a little farther yep. into spring. Yeah. Yep. 
you mentioned uh, exhibitors. How many total exhibitors, aside from the three open spots you still have, uh, are you expecting? Yeah, I think we're at 570 exhibitors right now. And I think that equates to about 800 spaces um, that are taken up. Because a lot of folks take up, you know, they'll have, instead of just one 10 by 10 in the exhibit buildings, they have two, three, four, six, some, um, you know, so, but the numbers are huge this year. So we're, we're excited about that and look to continue that moving into year 51. And by the way, we are planning for 51 already as well. If anybody knows Dennis Dunbar, I know he's working with my, with this, my CFA, CAF friends, um, I, I know he's on a call with them today, um, but he was actually just um, in another country working on some ideas and some opportunities for next year. So I'll leave it at that. So we're already working on 51. <laughs> Dennis has always got something up his sleeve. He's always working something and, and uh, usually turns out to be pretty, pretty interesting. Yes. I, I'll have to see if he sends me any text after this and be like, you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> so. And how about uh, advanced ticket sales? How are those doing? Yeah, we're 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 we are forty percent ahead of where we were this time last year. And last year at this time we were double. So I'm I'm and and we're you know we're later in the year though in April. Um, so there's a later start. So we're we're eleven days ahead. Plus we're forty percent up. So numbers are are looking very very good, and very strong. So we're, we're excited to see. A lot of people asked me last year when we were double. A lot of that was you know, new ticketing system, new website, made it too breezy for people to buy. And I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see what happens. But overall, last year we were up 20% um, for all across the board. Um, so hopefully we'll be at that or above that this year as well. So we'll see. Good. You uh, did include one more slide, and that is the, so uh, the overhead. Just in case there were questions about, you know, the uh, the field or anything like that i always throw that in there as a former airport director you know it was my baby so um you know always throw that in there if there are questions about the airfield so sure why don't you just kind of i'll use my pointer but just uh, we can kind of look at uh, some of some of the areas obviously uh the, the big one your exhibit the four exhibit buildings right up here yes yep our four exhibit buildings there and if you just go a little south on the other side of the trees and just to the east a little bit um oh, there you go um in that area it looks open last year that's where future and flight plaza is so that entire area you know that i showed you the diagram will be full with exhibitors and tents and activity um so it's going to be a very very popular area for us this year oh there's two blue roof buildings there um uh, the uh, longer rectangular one that's our central Florida aerospace academy and then the other blue roof building is the lakeland aero club um if you can look, to, uh, you got the Warbird ramp up there. Um, so the big asphalt, there you go. So a lot of military static there, but Fifi is going to be there. Diamond Lil, the Super Connie, uh, the MacArthur Baton will be there. Um, all the ride hops will be actually, other than um, in the first ride hops in the morning with um, Fifi and with Diamond Lil, will operate and start out of the Warbird ramp. Once they recover, they'll go to the north side of the airport. I know the CFA, CAF team and volunteers. If you're going on the second ride hop for that day for those aircraft, they're going to take you up to the north side of the airport. You jump on it there, do your ride, and when they come back, they'll recover back to the south side. But all the other ride hops are on the south side and will be there right on Texway Foxtrot. Um, go if you can go. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. No, well, go I, was ahead. Just, I was just going to point out all the uh, development that, yeah, that happened on the north side, a lot of that under, under your uh, leadership as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we. I guess when I got here in 2010, there was about 800 people working on the airport that time and our various facilities. Um, now there's over 3,000 working at the airport. I want to say total investment, whether it's FAA, Florida Department of Transportation, private investment, oh, oh, about half a billion in that 12-year period that we put into the airport. So, you know, when I got here in 2010, the airport only did about 64,000 operations. And again, you know, we're up close to over 100,000 more, you know, in that time. But We've just been fortunate, you know, Central Florida is growing. There's a lot of great opportunities and, you know, there's just a lot with the Florida Department of Transportation specifically um, with the FAA. I think for all of Florida, they have about 300 million a year that they dole out to the various airports, the FAA for Florida. The Florida Department of Transportation has the same amount. Wow. It is a gigantic opportunity. So like NOAA, for example, um, if you move over, you can see the big rectangular, um, you know, if you go down, 
just a little bit, the big rectangular building with the big tan roof. There you go. So over to the western edge, Noah is there. So Noah, the hurricane hunter. So we built them an $18 million facility. They got uh, my friends at McDill, the Air Force, kicked them out. So we got them, built them an $18 million facility. But the state of Florida put in half the monies for us to be able to build that, build that facility, 106,000 square feet, office shops, and 58,000 square foot hangar. And then we built in six months for them. Um, and they did just before I left it another $12 million expansion. So a $30 million facility. So they're two P3s. Uh, they're G, uh, G4. They're going to G550. They're also going to, um, do, uh, you know, replace the, uh, P3s with C130s in about the 2030 time frame. So there's going to be C130J models based here as well going into hurricanes out of Lakeland. So just cool wow. stuff. Well, just a, a couple of minutes that we have left. Um, any final thoughts as we wrap up tonight? No, I mean, we're just, we're excited. This is going to be the year to be here. So if you're not here, I don't know what to tell you. Um, it's, this is the year to come, you know, and obviously the year's moving forward, but this is a big one and we're going to celebrate and, uh, you know, hope to look forward to seeing everybody here again. We really appreciate, um, you know, the CAF and the partnership, you know, that you guys and all the assets that you're bringing here this year, it is a huge, huge deal for us. I told Dennis after last year, I was like, we need a huge Warbird presence. I was like, Figure it out. We got to get that done. You guys stepped up in a big, big way, and we appreciate it. And uh, you know, look forward to a great partnership as we continue to move forward. But you know, it's 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 going to be a great time. And again, we just encourage everybody to come out and participate, and you know, have a good time. And you know, and I know Paul, and I don't have the exact words, but Paul Pobrezny, you know, always said, you know, the airplanes bring us together, but it's the people that keep us coming back. And that's what the, these events are all about. Whether it's here, it's Air Venture, you know, shows all over the country. It's about the people, and, and we're all in this together, and we're all like-minded individuals. We don't always necessarily get along sometimes, but, you know, <laughs> but I love aviation. It's about keeping this industry going, and this is, you know, one of the premier events, and we're just very fortunate to be in the position we are, and, and I'm proud just to be, you know, the caretaker at this point, and hopefully we do a great job, you know, during my tenure here, and um, we've, we've got, we started off on, you know, strong, so we'll, we'll keep pushing. There you go. And uh, for the notum, for information, for tickets, uh, exhibitors, schedules, all that stuff, where do, where do they find that? They go to flysnf.org, fly, flysnf.org. Um, all the information is there um, and ready right there at everybody's disposal. So if you go, you're go, you looking specifically for the notum, uh, you go to our website, it will say flying in at the top. Um, when it drops down, the first thing there, it says notum, and it'll take you right to the page where you can download the PDF. Um, FAA also this year, um, because if you're not flying a warbird and you're not coming from the south side of the airport, there is a new Lake Parker arrival procedure. Um, so if you're coming and you know you're, you're Cessna 182, um, you're 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 coming in a tri pace or whatever it is. Um, actually, what they've done at AirVenture, obviously over the last several years, is stretch out the approach. They're doing not as far this year, um, but if you know the area, Fantasy of Flight um, in Kermit Weeks Place. Um, actually, the arrival procedure will start over Kermit's uh, facility there um, in here in Polk County, uh, right off of I-4, just north of I-4, and then flow down into Lake Parker. So I encourage everybody, if you're flying in, you know, go check out the NOTAM and the FAA produce a brand new video for that new procedure here this year. Excellent. All right. Well, that is going to uh, wrap up tonight's show. And uh, again, congratulations, uh, Gene, not only for the the 50th uh, show that you've got coming up in 41 days, but also, uh, yep. you know, all the uh, accomplishments that uh, you were able to, to put together around the airport before on the north side before you moved to the south side. So we're really yep. looking forward to uh, a great show this year in, in Lakeland. Thanks, Steve. We appreciate you all. Thanks for the opportunity to be here, and we'll see you in 41 days. Sounds good. And thank you for joining us tonight. Remember to uh, like and share our Warbird Tube videos. You can also subscribe on YouTube. Just to click the bell icon and you'll get notifications when new episodes of Warbird Tube are posted. Of course, we always value your input. So if you have any feedback on this or any of our episodes or ideas for future topics, please send Leah Block an email at media at cafhq.org. Until next time, I'm Steve Buss. Have a great night.